So last week, we talked about why it's hard for students to report sexual harassment or assault. They're afraid of being blamed, or what their friends will say, or what their harasser will do, even though Title IX says the school must protect them when they report. Last time, we heard about someone called a victim's advocate. Here's a video of a victim's advocate talking to a student about privacy, how to be safe, and get back to school after an assault. Victim of Rights Law Center, this is Jesse. How may I help? Um, hi. I was raped by a guy who goes to my school. Um, I don't want anyone to find out, but I'm, I'm scared to go back. Can you help me? Mm -hmm. The Rape Crisis Center said that you could tell me what an advocate does and help me with my privacy. I'm very sorry this happened. And I know it can be hard to reach out, so I'm really glad that you called. And I'm happy to explain what advocates do. Are, are you safe right now? Yeah, I am. This happened a couple days ago. Good. I'm glad that you're safe. So I want to take just a minute and explain a few things about confidentiality. Is that all right? Yeah. Thanks. So you asked about advocates and privacy. I want you to know that in this state, a certified advocate is not allowed to share any of your personal information without your permission. But there are two important things to know. First, certified advocates in this state are those who work at a community-based organization like a rape crisis center or a domestic violence program. But advocates who work for the police or the prosecutor are not confidential. And second, I'm not sure where you're calling me from, so I want to be sure to mention that the laws are different in every state. Advocates and other professionals in another state, they might not be able to keep your information private. Does that make sense so far? Yeah. Good. Well, every state and many tribes and in the U.S. territories, there are advocates who work for community-based nonprofit organizations that help sexual assault survivors. Some are sexual assault specific. And others will help survivors of domestic violence, sexual assault, stalking, human trafficking. Most of these organizations have a hotline. They might also offer individual or group counseling, legal advocates who will go to court with survivors and help get a protection order, for example. And some also have advocates who will meet victims at the hospital for support. And they may also be able to help with school-related issues. To help survivors figure out how to feel safe going to school, doing extracurricular activities, asking for accommodations at school under Title IX or other federal and state laws. So both the kinds of services that the advocate can provide and whether they're confidential, those are different in every state and also for every organization in terms of the services. Okay, so I get how advocates can help and depending where I live, they may not have to tell anyone. But what if I want the school to help me? Would a teacher have to report what happened? Will the school keep it confidential? Those are all good questions. Well, every state has laws that require certain individuals to report certain kinds of abuse. These are called mandatory reporting laws. In every state, though, teachers are mandatory reporters of child abuse. Other professionals may be mandatory reporters, too. And then in some states, like Texas or North Carolina, everyone is a mandatory reporter of child abuse. But other states require only certain people to report, such as teachers or counselors or therapists or doctors. If a school staff person finds out, are they going to tell my parents? I don't want them to find out. Yes, it's almost certain that the school will tell your parents. So if I want to talk to a teacher and get advice or ask the school for help, they'll end up telling the police and my parents. That seems stupid. It just discourages victims from getting help. I hear you. These laws reflect society's interest in keeping certain victims safe who they think are more likely to need help protecting themselves, like children or older individuals, people with certain disabilities. But it's also important for survivors to have someone to talk to in confidence. Often, though not always, this can be a community-based advocate. I'm not 18 yet, and I want my privacy until I figure out what to do. What can I do? Can I talk to an advocate? Yes. So you spoke to a rape crisis counselor before you called me that you said? And if you call other rape crisis programs or other community-based victim services organization, one thing is you might always want to be sure to block your caller ID if you don't want to be identified. 
And then before you share any personal information, you can ask the advocate whether they can provide confidential services to somebody who is a minor, whether they're a mandatory reporter of child abuse. If they say that they are, you might want to ask some follow-up questions, such as if you found out that a 16-year-old was raped by a classmate, would you have to report that? Or when are you required to report a sexual assault of a victim who's under 18? And then you can decide, based on those answers, how much information you want to share. But if I tell a teacher that I was sexually assaulted by someone at school, do they have to report it? I don't know what state you are in, but most likely the answer to that is yes. So if you're concerned about your privacy and you want to talk to a teacher directly instead of to an advocate first, you could ask that teacher when they're required to report the sexual assault of a minor. And you don't have to tell them why or that you're asking for yourself. You can just ask the question. They are likely to ask, though, why you want to know or if you were assaulted or are being abused or if you're in any danger. They'll be concerned. They'll want to know if you need help and they'll ask questions like that. What if I don't want the person who assaulted me to get in trouble? Well, if the police get involved, it's up to them and then to the prosecutor to decide what happens next. But once the police find out, they are supposed to investigate if a crime occurred and decide if there's enough evidence to forward it to the prosecutor. You can certainly tell the police whether you want the case prosecuted and that might influence what they do. Sometimes when a survivor says, I don't want this to go anywhere, they drop the matter. But other times, a case goes forward regardless of what a survivor says. You can definitely make your preferences known, but you don't get to decide. The police and the district attorney do. But again, the advocates are often familiar with local law enforcement practices, and hopefully they can tell you what usually happens in their community. And also, if you decide that you do want to report to the police or someone else reports to the police, you can always ask an advocate to go with you for support. So it seems that if I want confidentiality, then I'm limited in the kind of help that I can get. You're right. It is a trade-off. I mean, to get certain kinds of help, for example, accommodations at school under Title IX, you do need to share some information about the fact that something happened. But how much you tell them is up to you. But once a survivor who is a minor discloses an assault to someone who's a mandatory reporter, the survivor doesn't get to decide for themselves what information they want shared or with whom. But again, an advocate, they can help you understand when teachers are required to report abuse because the laws are different from state to state. It's really helpful and important to know what the laws are where you live and that way you can make as informed a decision as possible. How can I find out the laws in my state? Well, an advocate should be able to help. Another option is that there's the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network, or its acronym is RAIN. They have laws posted on their website, which is R-A-I-N-N dot O-R-G. Uh, you can also call or chat with them online. But again, if you want to stay anonymous, don't give out your name or your phone number, or even the name of your school or any other information that might help identify you. And if you want to be sure that the call is cleared from your phone, you want to clear the call log, or that your website search remains private, then you'll want to clear the history on your computer afterward. So if I don't say anything now, but I decide to report the assault later, are people going to think I'm lying because I didn't tell them right away? If I want to do something about it later, is there like someone I can tell now, confidentially, who can back up what I said happened? You know, like write down my name and what I say mm -hmm. happened. Again, really great questions. So yes, so long as the advocate is not a mandatory reporter. So for example, you could ask the advocate to document the call and the information that you're telling them so that if you do decide to report to the police, there is a record of your initial disclosure. And they're probably experienced working with survivors who aren't sure if they want to report an assault. Some survivors want to talk with someone right away about what happened, but for others, it may take months or years to be ready to discuss it. Like, what happens if I go back to school and he starts harassing me in class? Can the school help me change classes if I don't tell them who it is? Once a school is aware of sexual harassment, it has a duty under Title IX to investigate. So even if you don't tell them who it is or what exactly happened, but you can ask about changing your classes without initially giving any detail. 
If they want more information, then you can decide if you want to tell them about the assault or the harassment. For example, first you might just ask to transfer. If that doesn't work, then you could say, well, for safety reasons, I'm asking to be in this first period biology and not the afternoon one. Or to have lunch at this certain time, but I don't want to discuss it further. Of course, they are likely to ask you questions, even if you say you don't want to discuss it. But according to Title IX, they are supposed to respect your request for confidentiality if they can, but they will still have to comply with the mandatory reporting laws and their duty to provide a safe school environment. Okay, I think I can understand. Can I call you again if I need to? Absolutely, of course. I hope you will call us back if we can help. And if you need any referrals in the future for your community, then an advocate can help connect you to resources. Remember, you have a right to be safe. That includes at school. Okay, thank you. Well, thanks so much for calling. Bye-bye. Is it possible that some victims advocates have never heard about Title IX? Good point. We should contact the crisis centers and advocates in our area to make sure they know about Title IX. I think we should also contact some community team organizations. Yeah, I'm up for taking some Title IX fact sheets to the community center where I work.